So you've got your black belt, you've got the blessing from your martial arts school instructor, and you're ready to open your own dojo. That's it, right? N nothing else that you have to do? <laughs> well, of course there is. So if you want to know exactly what you need to do in order to open a successful martial arts dojo in 2022, stick around. I'm going to tell you exactly what you should be thinking about. Hey, everybody. My name is Jennifer Waters, and I help martial arts school owners scale their martial arts schools from six to seven figures, all without adding on expensive programs like after school or going the franchise route or even having a large staff. And in this video today, we are covering exactly what what you need to do if you're thinking about opening your own martial arts dojo in 2022. Listen, I jumped into the family business like from the get, but I really started diving into it at like 17 years old. And within four years, we had taken our martial arts school from doing barely, barely six figures, like not even, this one was just like five figures, all the way up and scaled it to doing seven figures of revenue a year. So when I tell you I know what to do and I know the things that you should be thinking about when you're opening your own martial arts dojo, I'm coming from a lot of experience in this area. Now let's get into it because the first thing is location, location, location location it is really honest and truly your location a lot of people can't afford to go into a pristine location so they get a location kind of off the beaten path and maybe in not the best neighborhood and they're like okay I'm gonna set up my dojo here and people are going to just come to it I'm gonna let everybody know I'm gonna put it in the local directories and they're just gonna show up the reality is is that if you're trying to charge a premium price for your services which I recommend that you do. You're gonna need to make sure that you're in a neighborhood or a location in which you can charge those premium services. An easy way and an easy point of reference is taking a look at national brands and seeing where they've set up location. Now, everybody knows that when you go somewhere in the United States and you find a Dollar General, that civilization has started to occur in that rural area. But oftentimes you're not gonna find a lot more. Maybe Walmart comes along and opens up and then eventually as that city gets more developed, you start getting national brands like Target, Starbucks, and other chains and restaurants. My suggestion for you is look around the area and look for those areas that already have existing restaurants, Targets, Starbucks, those types of places because they've already done the market research and have charged millions of dollars for that market research from those market researchers. Utilize that for yourself. They know where the good areas are. And yes, are you gonna pay a premium price? You sure are. So only buy what you need. Don't buy what you think you're gonna need. You can literally run hundreds of students out of a very small square footage for martial arts. You just need the right systems behind you to do that. But first, you gotta open your martial arts dojo. So find a location, talk with your local realtor, find somebody you can trust and tell them, I gotta be in this area. I gotta make sure that I can afford the rent so I don't need a whole lot of space and I need to be in something that I don't have to commit for a long period of time because I'm gonna go through some explosive growth and I might need to move to a better location. Now the next thing that you have to consider is you have to think about how you're going to market and how people are gonna know you even exist, even if you get a good location. It doesn't mean that people are gonna see your sign and walk in. I mean, you might get walk-in traffic, but you cannot depend upon it. You need to be able to think about, how am I gonna get leads? Like hundreds of leads every single month. And what am I gonna do to generate those leads? So before you go and sign a lease and sign a contract and start doing all the business paperwork, you need to start thinking about, what am I gonna do to actually get leads to come to me? I need to have a marketing budget. I need to actually be able to go, yep, I'm throwing that money and it's going straight to marketing. Have a plan in place before you just go, if I build it, they will come. No, they won't. The third thing that you need to really seriously consider is your sales ability. Do you have any ability at all to sell anything? Have you done any sales before? Like anything, have you directly spoken from you to a consumer and tried to sell a service? Not like you just worked in a retail store and people came up and purchased stuff and checked out. That's not selling. The branding and the advertising and the sales going on in the store, that's selling. I'm talking about you talking one-to-one -one and selling a service, something that is supposed to come in the future. And if you haven't done that yet, what skills are you going to acquire to make sure that you can simply and effectively communicate 
what you're offering that is compelling enough that someone's like, yeah, I'm going to sign up with you and I'm going to pay you a high ticket premium price for your services. If you don't have that skill set and if you can't practice yet, you haven't even practiced what that offer is going to be, you need to do it and you need to do it now. Again, before you sign the lease, before you walk into your building. I want to save you the trouble and the agony of signing for a lease and a location and just living on hope alone that you're gonna fill up your dojo. Have a strategy, have a plan. You would never go into a fight and have no strategy at all to win that competition. There would be planning, there would be training camp. You would be prepared before you step through those ropes and decided I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna win the championship so they can raise my hand in the air. There would be a ton of planning. So treat this the exact same way. And hey, listen, if you're getting a ton of value from this, go ahead and smash that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I go ahead and post more videos. I'm always posting more videos, like three a week. So you need to make sure that you take care of that. And if you are interested in my top three marketing strategies, you need to click this video uh, or over here, you need to click this video because it's gonna show you the exact marketing strategies that you're gonna need to succeed moving forward as a new dojo owner. And congratulations for thinking about opening your own dojo in 2022. I look forward to hearing from you in the future.